All righty, let's do it. Okay, so I have our five-year prediction. I don't know why I said R, it's just me. I have my five-year prediction for you guys. It's been a while since I've done one of these. It's been a while since I've made a video, actually. Let's be fully honest. I'm recovering from COVID. I'm trying really hard not to cough right now. All my symptoms are gone, but my throat is dry. So if I cough, I'll, try, I'll cut the audio and then I'll try and start over. Um, but nonetheless, Wonderland is up for some serious investments. Um, and I know what I'm talking about. With this channel and its rapid growth and all the people I've met in the industry, I've had some really great opportunities to have some amazing conversations with some amazing people in different parts of the field and different parts of the park. And to be honest, I have a pretty clear understanding of the direction that Canada's Wonderland's heading and the kind of investments that they're looking to make. With that being said, um, everything in this video is the opinions of myself and not Canada's Wonderland and Canada's Wonderland will make an announcement when they make an announcement um, on future attractions. So none of the stuff I discussed in this video um, is for sure and it is to be taken with a grain of salt um, from Amusement Insiders. <laughs> with that being said, Wonderland is definitely heading in the right direction in terms of investments and what could that mean? Well, we had a great conversation way back in the day when Yukon opened up on Media Day, and we were told that along with a new restaurant at Canada's Wonderland, that a dark ride to replace Action Theatre would be coming in the same year. Well, the restaurant is queued to open about the second or third week of August from what we are being told, um, and there is no sign of a dark ride. So what the, could that possibly mean? Was the dark ride scratched? Um, I have a couple of theories. So. For those of you that don't know, right next to the CN Tower, they are building a flying theater that is going to be called Flying Over Canada. From my understanding, that is something similar to what Canada's Wonderland was looking to add at Canada's Wonderland. Now, with that being said, does that mean that we will no longer be adding a flying theater? Um, no, it probably just means that Wonderland was going to build something very similar, Flying Over Canada in Frontier Canada in the Action Theatre building, and now it doesn't make sense to do that because the one by the CN Tower will obviously be a tourist attraction, so why should Canada's Wonderland have the exact same thing? Now, with that being said, there's this specific model that Mock Rides has designed that would be perfect at Canada's Wonderland, and maybe they're just waiting for the final... Um, kinks of this to be sorted out. It's a dual loading flying theater with very low maintenance costs made by mock rides. I could see something like this working at Canada's Wonderland and maybe they're just waiting on that to be sorted out. Some of these new prototype rides just need some of their kinks worked out. Um, and that could be one of the reasons or they're going to go down a different route because of the flying theater coming to the CN Tower area that's going to be flying over Canada. Um, with that in mind, Mass Effect 4 or whatever it is, 3D at CGA is going to be leaving that park as well. So maybe that is part of the factor into why Canada's Wonderland's waiting to add into that theater and it's taking longer than expected. We could be receiving Mass Effect from CGA as it is fairly new-ish. Um, and it could do well. It would just be kind of reinstating action theater at that point, but I don't think they would keep that same theme. So that's what's unique. Now, 2023, we know it is very clear to anyone at this point that Planet Snoopy is going to receive some sort of investments. As an enthusiast, you know what stakes mean and you know what early signs of construction are, and theme parks don't start these construction projects until they absolutely need to. Construction is one of the highest costs of a project um, in terms of building these rides and attractions. And for Planet Snoopy to already have these signs, uh, it, it's very clear that there's an expansion coming. Now, what that could look like is very confusing because they could go down two different routes. One, they could introduce a third themed area, uh, Camp Snoopy, like the other parks have, and that would give Canada's Wonderland three themed kids areas, or they could just build on top of Planet Snoopy um, and uh, carry it on from there. I do think they're gonna be looking to add a restaurant, an indoor restaurant in there as well, because it is a very popular area for Winterfest and they need more indoor things, and maybe even an indoor dark ride and some other little tiny attractions. It could go either way. With that, Canada's Wonderland has a history of adding a flat ride or a water park addition whenever they do a kid's little expansion or add a kid's ride. They like to balance it out between the family and the thrill seekers. We are running out of things to add for thrill seekers in terms of flat rides, so that leaves me to predict that we will see an S&S &S Scream and Swing in the next year to three years added to Canada's Wonderland, all depending on when this roller coaster that we'll be talking about soon fits into our schedule. 
Definitely think a Scream and Swing would be the best fit for Canada's Wonderland. It's really thrilling and it just looks super awesome. And it's always one of a, a favorite in the roller coaster community. Every time I talk to someone, it's just one of those rides that everyone loves. I personally love it. Now, with that being said, CGA also has some new pro slides, water slides, I think they're pro slides, that they would be looking to transfer to another park. For those of you that visited Canada's Wonderland, our water park is one of the least invested in water parks in the chain, in my opinion. There's obviously probably another couple too that I don't know about in the chain, but we need investments in Splashworks desperately. And it would just make sense to take what one park has that they're no longer gonna need and move it on over to Canada's Wonderland instead of buying brand new. So I could totally see Canada's Wonderland stealing some of CGA's investments in their water park and bringing them on over to Canada's Wonderland. They are in desperate need of it. So I would definitely see that either in 2023 or before the coaster in 2024 or 2025. Again, whenever this roller coaster plays in, that's the tricky year right now. There's a lot of things up in the air due to COVID and due to the park sale of CGA. There's a lot, again, Anything in this video, I do not know a year except for 2023. Um, so that's definitely one thing that I think Wonderland's gonna be taking from CGA and it's pretty clear, is their water park investments. I feel like I'm about to cough. Um, now that brings me to our next coaster. Now, this is where it gets really tricky. I think that it's very obvious that Canada's Wonderland is either going to get a mock power launch coaster, a launch coaster by mock, whether that's spinning or not spinning is up in the air. I definitely think they should just go with spinning because it would increase, again, the different coasters that Canada's Wonderland has, and that's a record they used to have, um, or a wing coaster. Now, I'm very certain that Wonderland would not go launch wing coaster. They would want height in terms of the wing coaster. Again, Cedar Fair has lost their record. Um, so whatever park they choose to put a wing coaster in, if it's Carowinds, Wonderland, or Kings Island, they're gonna wanna take that record back. So whoever gets that wing coaster out of those three parks is gonna go for the record. I do think that Wonderland will eventually get a wing coaster just because of its capacity being about 2 million a year. Wonderland is definitely eyeing that style of coaster. I just think because of COVID and Yukon Striker being in 2019, we're not ready to spend another 30, 35 million for a world record wing coaster quite yet. I think that's gonna be definitely around the 2030 timeline, 2029. Um, timeline and we're gonna be looking to add maybe like a 28 million I know there's hardly a difference whatever copperhead strike costs I don't know what this costs maybe it's 30 million too and I sound like nonsense right now but I definitely think um, even based off of some comments I've seen on TikTok people aren't craving tallest anymore they want something lower to the ground they want something launched um, people really like backlot at Canada's Wonderland and I think they could benefit from marketing a spinning launch coaster at Canada's Wonderland it would do phenomenal um, so I definitely see that in our timeline. I know I'm a little biased because I've wanted one of these at Canada's Wonderland, but it would do so well in Frontier Canada, themed to log, um, cutting company, or even if they are to revitalize the um, international area, it could be a Japanese theme even, um, or even Medfair if they were to remove Dragonfire. Now I'm not ready to make that video yet, but definitely have my eyes on Dragonfire, just so everyone knows gonna keep them on Dragonfire for the next couple of months. There's just some certain things we've seen on Dragonfire that are starting to show signs and Cedar Fair loves removing those arrow coasters. Now we're getting into um, the realm of Cedar Fair is gonna continue to want to add dark rides to Canada's Wonderland. Canada's Wonderland sits in a very hot and cold climate and with Winterfest being such a success at Canada's Wonderland, they're gonna want more indoor rides what those indoor rides could look like. You're gonna to wanna to add like kid-friendly indoor dark rides. You're gonna to wanna to add some adult indoor dark rides as well. Um, I'm showing on the screen a mock dark ride. Sorry, I'm gonna to have to cough, but I'm gonna hold it in. Uh, a mock dark ride, just because I think that uh, going back to basics and not using Triotech because they are such a fail, especially if you've been hearing about what's going on with Canada's Wonderland and Guardian, recently in the last month, they are never gonna touch Triotech again, let me tell you. They are ready to cut ties. But again, that is just my rumblings in the community. That is not an official statement. That is just what I've been hearing through the grapevine. But nonetheless, I definitely see them working with, Sally Dark Ride would be another good company that I could see them working with, but um, with Cedar Fair recently working with um, Mock again, or not again, they have been working with them. 
I would love to see them invest in some of these newer dark rides that Mock has been announcing as well. That would be awesome. Outside of that, um, a few other attractions I could see them adding. As you can tell, I'm losing my breath now. <laughs> COVID's serious. I'm literally struggling to make a 10 minute video for you guys. I'm out of breath. I'm literally weak. Um, but nonetheless, I could see them adding a mock power splash or even one of these little family friendly um, kind of like Thunder Run. I don't know what to call them. I don't know what they're called, the ride model, but those little rides that go up and down and spin that Cedar Point has. Um, Pipe Scream, I think is what it's called at Cedar Point. Um, this is something that I think Wonderland has been eyeing for a couple of years. We saw something a couple of years back on a piece of paper about Pipe Scream being carried around Wonderland. So we've been kind of eyeing slash knowing that something like this probably is coming to Canada's Wonderland in the next couple of years. Just not sure of the time frame again, that these investments are gonna be made. It is very difficult to predict the years because of COVID and because of the sale of CGA. So again, this is one of those attractions from CGA that I could definitely see being relocated to Canada's Wonderland um, or one of the smaller parks, but it's an easy ad for Canada's Wonderland. Um, and I definitely see Canada's Wonderland not taking anything cool, unfortunately, from CGA, just the water park and possibly this, um, and maybe a few of their kids' rides for uh, Planet Snoopy. But nonetheless, that's kind of my like four to five years uh, kind of prediction. And I do have to say, I'm very confident in some of my guesses, um, if that makes any sense, but obviously take it with a grain of salt but I'm extremely confident in a lot of these guesses. I'm gonna say that I could walk out of this video being about 80% correct um, in terms of the next five years at Canada's Wonderland. Um, I wouldn't be surprised though, by the way guys, that the hotel makes a reintroduction in the next two to three years. I think that a hotel will be announced again um, when we get our next edition. I think Wonderland's just gonna wait for them to become more of a tourist destination. Um, I think you're seeing that. A lot of the American parks are struggling uh, for attendance right now, and Canada's Wonderland is breaking some serious records. So Canada's Wonderland is proving to be um, inflation proof um, with the power of that season pass and its add-ons. I think a lot of families in Canada are relying on Canada's Wonderland to be that family destination. I'm in a lot of Wonderland groups on Facebook and that seems to be what families are saying, like can't afford to go on trips, so we're taking our kids to Canada's Wonderland. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's been a while. I'm gonna try and make some more videos, but as you can tell, it has literally drained me. Um, but yeah, thanks for supporting the channel and thanks for all the messages uh, during COVID. Uh, keep an eye on our TikTok, by the way. Follow us, Amusement Insiders, on TikTok. We post there daily, multiple times a day. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.